Okay, I think we're live now. Hello, hello everyone. I see we have four people only. I hope more people will join. How are you doing? How was your weekend? Good morning, Europe. Good afternoon, Asia. I don't think we have anyone from the US. Hello. Oh, wow. So we have US as well. <laughs> then good evening or good night. <laughs> How is everyone doing? How was your weekend? Yeah, I made it. <laughs> tired. I'm also a little bit tired as well. Like yesterday, if you remember after the webinar, I said, I'm gonna just shower and go to bed, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so I went to bed again around like 2 a.m. And uh, not fully rested. But how was your weekend? What were you all up to? How do you usually spend your weekends? You can hear me well, right? My voice is better today. I was singing too much on Saturday. So yesterday I had hard speaking. <laughs> no, I haven't been looking into futures. <laughs> I was having fun. I'm joking. And, oh, okay. Not only fun, but yeah, my weekend was not the most productive one. I'm also fast for this weekend was to look into features. I was planning to fix a layout for the live stream, download the software so that I can level up my live streams a little bit. I had so many plans, but Saturday I wanted to have a sleep morning because my sleep is messed up and I was feeling just too tired. And after that, I woke up, I went for swimming, I was sunbathing, I was reading a book, chilling, and then um, had a call with my family, and and then um, one trader reached out. We decided to go for a dinner, and it was supposed to be just a dinner <laughs> and hiking. As I or I thought that it was going to be just hiking or walking or like going to uh, some hills, but it ended up being. A really cool party with amazing music. So yesterday, my I um, I was feeling crazy tired because I again went to bed like 4 a.m. I think it was, and uh, my brain was just too slow yesterday. I did some back testing, and I prepared for a webinar that I had with my community and nothing else was done <laughs> that was my unproductive weekend but sometimes it's good to have some fun like you cannot be too hard on yourself and just work hard work hard work hard i've been working hard for so long so that's why i feel that it's okay to spoil myself from time to time and uh, not strictly follow everything in my plan it's important to follow your trading plan but outside of trading it's good to follow but sometimes of course you can make some exceptions um i've been talking to one trader who was who is struggling with his psychology and he told me oh i cannot do anything like i, I should not have fun because i'm not profitable yet because i don't have the funded accounts yet or this or that um and I'm like, okay, so you think that by just staring at your chart, at the charts all day long, that you are in a 
healthy mental state to be able to reach some to see some success and to see some results many people make the mistake to get obsessed with trading um and think that if you spend hours and hours and hours per day in front of the charts and you don't have like you're not allowed to party you should be the 5 a.m club like um all of these can lead to self-sabotage that will cause more issues than helping you. That's why it's important to have balance and to have, um, if you if you know how, like if you um, manage your time properly, you're going to have time for everything. I fully understand if you're like uh, at the first stages of just learning everything. When I was just learning i used to spend a lot of time in front of the charts i used to spend a lot of time watching videos taking notes trying to understand things so if you're in this learning stage then yeah i completely understand why you want to spend more time in front of the charts but don't spend all your days in front of the charts you should do something for your brain for your mental health because if you're just on the charts waiting for those setups, you're going to start trading out of boredom. You're going to start forcing setups. Um, when you don't have life outside of the charts, you become too vulnerable and, um, and you become too attached to the PL. And this is just not good for, for the mindset. I made a sale on CatGPY. What do you think? What should I think? <laughs> if you followed your plan, it's good. If, if you didn't follow your plan, it's not good. How is trading or analyzing the chart in a fasted state? Do you feel like it gives you a mental boost? Oof, not really. Like right now, I just feel that I want food. I want to eat now, now, now. <laughs> I took a cup of green tea before the stream I'm, I'm a green tea addict by the way um at uni i i was working at one uh, research and my task was to find the uh, i was researching about the benefits and the disadvantages of green tea and the hardest part of the the project was to find um what disadvantages from green tea green tea is so healthy uh, so I do recommend to everyone to drink at least one cup of green tea per day. And uh, it was a hard task to find something negative about the green about green tea. So the only thing that I wrote in my report was that if you take more than 16 or 18 cups per day, that the coffee might cause like a little bit of jittering effect. But that's the only negative tea, tea, uh, thing I could find about green tea. And since then... At the beginning, I didn't like it, but I was, uh, I do really care about my health. Um, so I started drinking uh, one cup per day. And after that, it became a habit. So now I cannot go, uh, I cannot go one day without like taking at least one cup of green tea. Um, and it helps me like when I'm fasting, it helps me to, uh, it helps, it, it kind you know that the taste of green tea is a little bit, uh, how to describe it, not bitter, but yeah, kind of. So it decreases my appetite. And that way I can like uh, go without food for a longer time. So when I'm fasting, it's not like, um, uh, when I'm fasting, I only take water uh, co uh, black coffee and green tea. That those are the only things that I'm consuming. But of course, black coffee without sugar, uh, without uh, tea, without honey. It should be zero calories, just detox on the body. Um, when it comes to, for benefits, I can definitely say that it does help me sleep better and. Uh, and mm, I feel more focused, definitely, because um, when we eat, 
if you try to do analysis like uh, after a meal, you might not be super focused because all your blood is going into your stomach to start digesting the food that you have consumed. And that's why after food, we usually feel sleepy. But when we are hungry or angry, <laughs> it impacts my mood a little bit, but now I'm aware of it so I can control it. Before I was, it was not, um, I was turning into a different person when I was hungry, but now I can control it because I'm aware of it. Um, but yeah, when we are in a fasted state, our brain is more alert. So that's why um, you can focus more, but uh, at the same time, yeah, the hunger is a bit uh, tricky. Um, but yeah, for me, it's important to take care of myself. Help, like exercise, eat healthy. I'm a foodie, like I eat a lot for a female, uh, but I do exercise a lot as well and I don't eat junk food. I don't like candies, the sugar intake, my sugar intake is through fruits. I do sometimes, of course, eat ice cream, cakes, but it doesn't happen often. And I don't have the craving. And everything is a habit. Like many years ago, I used to eat snacks a lot. Now uh, I'm not eating any junk food, nothing that is... Like, I don't want to eat things that are just useless for my body. I don't want to poison my body. Hi, hello to Kenya. Okay, where are you all from? Let me know in the comments. Where are you all from? And don't forget to hit the like button. I see that only seven likes. I, I have only seven likes and you're 24 in the stream. So come on, hit the like button. <laughs> uh what about alcohol um i i haven't like fully stopped drinking alcohol but before um in my early 20s in my teenage year i used to drink alcohol every day or every second day every third day and when i was drinking i was drinking um quite a lot uh but <laughs> Uh, morning was ill. <laughs> um, but with COVID and when I started tra trading, I just decided to shift my uh, lifestyle and I started sleeping well. I started exercising and that's when I decided to minimize my alcohol consumption. Um, and right now, like um, I'm drinking once in a while and i don't drink as much as i used to drink like i i take two drinks three max and that's it before i could go for a bottle <laughs> um but i i don't like drinking alcohol uh like i want to enjoy it and when i when i have a good dinner um the only things that i like to drink now is whiskey and wine those are the, th the two things that i like to drink so with a good dinner i like to have wine and if i'm just out and i want to um, have a drink then it's whiskey whiskey on the rocks those are my favorite things but yeah i'm trying i'm trying not to drink alcohol um i only drink once in a month sometimes i go a whole month uh, without, without drinking. Yeah. Honesty is what I appreciate the most. Honesty is very important for me. I hate, I'm a person who hate lies. Like, um, uh, you can, you can do the worst thing in the world, but if you're honest, I can accept it and I can understand you and, and, and I can forgive, but don't try to lie to me. Like for me, honesty is so important. So that's why I'm, I'm honest. Many people don't like me because I'm, I'm very honest and I'm throwing in their face the truth that they might not want to hear. And some people say that I'm arrogant or that I'm... Um, some people say that it's not good to do that. And I, I understand, like, sometimes I do hurt people by just throwing the truth in their face. But someone got to 
do it. <laughs> someone gotta, I mean, for me, I don't take, like when someone is criticizing me, um, I can understand if the criticism is coming with a good intention or bad intention. And the intention is what matters for me. Like if you, if you have a good intention and you're telling me that I'm not doing something in the right way, I, I really appreciate what, and I really, I'm really happy to have people in my life that are going to be honest and tell me what are my flaws so that I can work on my, on getting better. And that's how everyone should have a person in life that is like honest. You don't want to have people that are just uh, telling you what you want to hear because this is not good for for your for yourself. You should aim to be better. You should look for um, you should be aware of your faults or no first of all you have to accept that nobody is perfect. And um, uh, you should not aim to be perfect. You should accept yourself as you are, but you should aim to become better 1% every single day. So, okay, let I've been talking for 20 minutes. I can keep talking and talking. Let's let's look at the charts. So, let me start with DXY first. <laughs> uh okay so i will i will start with futures um in gold i was looking at gold yesterday one community member uh asked me to look at gold uh but gold is at all-time highs the only thing you can do in gold is just look for a retracement to buy We respected this breaker block that I marked up yesterday. Again, some retracement and buy more. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't been trading gold for so long, so I'm not going to just jump on trading something that I, I'm not feeling comfortable with. I'm comfortable with EU and GU, and that's what I'm trading. But I definitely started watching gold from time to time, like checking it. And... Um, and once I check, like, um, look into futures, I, I have to backtest. And when I'm done backtesting, when I feel more comfortable, then I'll start trading. But I'm not in a rush to start trading something that I don't feel comfortable with. Like, it just makes no sense. Um, so let me start from the... Let me start from the monthly chart. I don't know if you can hear the music that I have in the background. Let me just put it. Okay. Um, let me focus. Uh, so on the monthly chart, we can see that we have a monthly balance price range here that is holding price. So if we... Uh, look at the structure, we had a market structure break here or market structure shift, however you want to call it, it's the same thing. And we had a retracement into discount. So now we're going higher. Take it easy, guys. I can take a look at different things later on. First, I will take a look at DXY. After that, EURUSD, then GBPUSD, and then I can check other pairs that I'm not trading. So we had a market structure break, price came into discount and we started seeing price going higher. So we don't know if this is a market structure shift until we see this high being broken. Um, it's gonna be confirmed once we see this high being broken. But uh, what we, we don't have to like predict what price will do in the future we should just build an understanding of where we are at on a higher time frame and know the bigger picture and then try to form ideas on uh, on the lower time frame so what do we see here uh, we see that we had also an internal break 
and we are breaking on the upside. But currently, if we drop on a lower time frame, uh, which is the weekly time frame, we can see that where do we come from? We come from a buy side liquidity pool, which means that price will now hunt sell side liquidity. We already had some sell side liquidity taken here, which was the the last week's the not last 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 week's low, um, and we have a fair value gap. And if you were on the live stream last week, um, I mentioned already that I would expect that this fair value gap might hold price and act as support, and we might see price going higher from here. But since we are on the weekly chart, we don't know how long time it's going to take for price to come test this zone. We already tested it once. Uh, it might come back and test it again. We might even uh, drop lower and test the 50% of this weekly order block that we have here, which I've marked, up, uh, marked out, which is the threshold level of, a, of an order block. So I do expect to see some deeper retracement on DXY. And another thing that we should keep in mind is that, so as I mentioned, we tested this monthly balance price range already two times. We tested this weekly order block that we have here. So we don't know if, with a guarantee that price will um, pass through this zone. We, those zones might act as resistance and we might see price going lower. We haven't confirmed yet that we are in an uptrend because we had only one market structure shift. And in order for us to confirm if we're going in an uptrend, we have to see this high being broken, but this is just too far away for us to think about that. We just have to focus on what's happening now in the next week or the next few weeks. So since we're coming, as I said, from a buy side, I would expect to see a deeper retracement and price hunting more sell side liquidity. And this is the first zone where price might uh, might respect, but until we get there, we can have like many trade ideas in between this zone. So let me go on the daily chart to see more like what's happening on the daily chart. Um, so we can see that with NFP, we rebalance this imbalance and we started dropping lower. Um, if you were on the live stream, I did share one trade idea that I took on GU. I can talk about it later, but it was based on um, this higher time frame narrative or higher time frame understanding. And um, and yeah, what I'm expecting to see is as long as the order flow is bearish, I will be bearish on DXY short term and then we will see how we're going to be reacting in this fair value gap or this order block zone. So the next target, if we continue lower, will be last week's low. So this will be the first thing that I will be looking at, the first target that I will be aiming for. If we go on the four hour chart, we can see that if we look at the structure, um, we got a break here and the low that caused that break was this one here. So we haven't broken on the downside yet we are still on the four hour, we're still, the structure is still bullish. We had a market structure break here and then we created a new higher high. So we had this, this, and for the, sorry for the bad drawing, <laughs> it was horrible, but we tested this area here that that I mentioned was a point of interest last week. So since the order flow 
on a higher time frame started shifting to bearish. Um, like right now, of course, I would prefer to see this low being broken for me to confirm that we are continuing lower because this might have been just a retracement. It's not a guarantee that price will continue lower, but we have already created like a nice trend line liquidity. That's why I think that there is a higher probability that price will continue lower. But that's why it's important to look at the order flow on a lower time frame. And the order flow on a lower time frame will tell us what uh, what makes more sense or what price is doing. So here, we, uh, this is the first target that I will have. And we have so much sell side liquidity on this side. And uh, just to mention, so uh, we, we know that the driver of the market is liquidity. When we go for buy side liquidity, after we take buy side liquidity, price goes for sell side liquidity. And this buy side liquidity uh, or sell side liquidity is in a form or of swing highs or swing lows or imbalances or fair value gaps, however we want to call them. So for, we came here and we took this liquidity, which was in the form of an imbalance. So I would anticipate to see now size so of liquidity being taken here. And if I go on the one hour chart, let me just delete this ugly drawing. We know that we have, I will actually mark it up like this as a trend line liquidity. And this is something that I was uh, talking about yesterday on the webinar with my community. So we are in this, um, we have this trend line liquidity and what do we have here? We have a balance price range that might act as resistance. We have this order block here. Let me change color so that it won't be like too messed up. Uh, I'm okay with blue and right balance price range. So price came and, um, and rejected from this volume imbalance or this order block. We saw this push on the downside after NFP. So what I would anticipate to see today or tomorrow, and by the way, I wanted to check the news as well. You have to always look at the economic calendar to frame different ideas. So as we can see today, we have nothing. Tomorrow we have nothing. The first high impact news that we have is on Wednesday and we have CPI on Wednesday. So the big move will happen on Wednesday. Um, and usually I don't like trading um, the session before CPI because it's just consolidation. Whenever we have a high impact news, like a session before or a day before the news is usually consolidation that is engineering liquidity. And then we have a big move um, during the news. Uh, what usually happens with news is we have first the accumulation and shortly before the news, we see the manipulation and then the distribution happens during the news. So th that's how you can like start framing ideas of what might happen um, the days before the news. And like i don't want you to be stuck into one idea you should be open and you should think out of the box you should not be too biased like let's say you have bullish bias or bearish bias but you should not get married to bias you should um you should open your mind and be open for different ideas because you don't want to be married to your bias and just um blind close your eyes like blind yourself and because um, it has happened to me that I get married to the bias and I and then I take so many losses in a row just because I'm resisting to see that price is telling me that something else is happening. But yeah, uh, to go back to the economic calendar, we have CPI Wednesday and we have PPI um, 
we have PPI on Thursday. So this is the significant things that we have this week. We have FOMC, but this FOMC is not the crazy FOMC that we usually have with press conference. This is just a meeting. Um, so the big moves this week will be Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so to go back here to the analysis on DXY, so what I'm going to, uh, poten potential ideas that would support my idea that price will continue lower or DXY will drop lower. Um, I would be actually open for both sides because right now we, we are in, in the middle of this. Uh, if we if we think of uh, what happened on a higher time frame, as I mentioned, we took sell side, we went for buy side. Now it's again time for sell side, but maybe price wants to go for more uh, buy side before going lower. And sometimes it might just continue higher. We didn't receive the break that would have confirmed that we are going lower, but this break might happen after price retest this balance price range that we have on a lower time frame and this point of interest and then drop lower. So what I would wait for today is price coming into this balance price range or into this order block. And I want to see a clear shift in order flow on 15 minutes in order to be uh, to look for long positions on euro and pound. So this will be, this is gonna be what I would be anticipating to see. So one possible scenario would be price coming into this zone. And then from here, I would like to see a clear shift in delivery or shift in order flow in order for me to take um, I'm not trading DXY, of course, <laughs> but I'm doing the opposite with Euro, USD and GBP USD in order to target this clean trend line liquidity. But I'm not going to target here. I'm not going to target this low. I would target the trend line liquidity because I can see that we have a nice order block here that took, took significant uh, liquidity pool before and which makes it a strong um, order block. So let's say if price does not want to go deeper into this higher time frame fair value gap that we had, price might just go come here, take this trend line liquidity and from here shift bullish. Uh, let's say we see this in order to continue higher. So I will be open for bot things and I'm not going to be greedy to go for crazy ambitious targets. I will just try to understand what price is telling me and take the low hanging fruits. So this is my, this is my idea for uh, DXY. This is what I want to see. And if I don't see that, I'll just wait to see what price wants to do because this will uh, contradict with what my um, prediction is, kind of. So if this does not happen, then I would just wait for it to see what price wants to tell me what, what's coming next. Uh, to go to Euro. Oops, I still have my writings and drawings from the webinar yesterday. Let me just clean up. So we are still in this ping pong zone on on the monthly. Nothing much to say here. We had this market structure shift, exactly what we saw on DXY. We had this market structure shift, but we will confirm if it's a market structure shift if we see a new low being created. We have this. We had this balance price range here that has been already tested. Let me mark it up. 
So we have this balanced price range that has been tested multiple times. And internally, we had another market structure break that is not confirmed yet. So that's why this zone is uh, a bit tricky. But it doesn't mean that we're not going to have intraday opportunities. We don't have to know what mark, um, what was the um, saying from the trade, trading the zone. We don't have to know what will happen next in order to make money. So we're playing with the edge and we have risk management in place because we're, we don't know for sure what will happen. We will just have to let our edge to play out. And that's why we have risk management in place. So we have the market structure break here as we have on DXY, but here price did not take um, sell side liquidity, which was SMT divergence. And if you were on the live streams last week, or uh, I did mention about this SMT divergence, which was uh, uh, which was an early indicator that euro might push higher for uh, like short term. We don't know what exactly will happen long term because of the tricky zone in which we are in. Price might decide to just target this trend line, clean trend line liquidity that we have here and continue higher, but it might also decide to confirm the market structure shift and continue lower. So it's 50-50. On the daily chart, um, as I, if you were on the live, okay, I didn't take your use, it would you be used that I took, but the idea was the same. So we had a, another market structure shift here, uh, which is on the daily time frame. So once we have taken significant liquidity pool, which is a buy side liquidity pool. We had a retracement, which was uh, taking sell side liquidity in a form of an imbalance. So now I would anticipate to see again, buy side liquidity being targeted. And the first target would be of course, the previous week high. And we have another point of interest here on the lower time frame that I will show once I drop on a lower time frame. So as you can see, we have a fair value gap here that was already once tested. We have another order block here that um, will either hold price and push it lower, or it will at least act as some form of resistance for pullback before price continues higher. So this is how we are building the narrative by observing different zones. We start like building a story of how price will be delivered to those different zones. And based on that, we are creating our trade ideas. Is it clear or am I confusing you more? <laughs> Some people say that the way I explain is very simple and easy, but some people don't really understand the way I'm explaining. So I would appreciate if you give me some feedback. So as we can see here, we had a balanced price range. Uh, we had a balanced price range here and uh, we already rejected once from this balanced price range. And as I mentioned on uh, DXY, if we look at the structure, which is easier to see, actually, if we drop on a lower time frame, we had this put, uh, the movement was as follows. So we don't have this break that is confirming yet. That we're going to continue higher. But the order flow here is bullish unless we don't respect the zones that the bullish PDRAs that are left here. If we don't respect those uh, bullish PDRAs and we don't get a confirmation, I will just wait to see what price wants to do. Maybe price wants to come lower. We don't know. That's why we just have to observe and react according to what price is telling to us. Let me see. OK, 
Okay, good. Uh, my community is not opened yet. I, I will talk. I, I will talk about it later. Let me just finish with the analysis. I'm taking my time to break down everything. Um, so from here, as I mentioned, we haven't broken the structure yet. In order to break the structure, we have to break this high. But we are looking at the order flow. Uh, so if we look at the order flow, let me just clean up the mess a little bit. This is still from last week. If I, if we look at, um, if you look at this zone here, this is a point of interest that I would observe. What else do we see here? We see a balanced price range. I will mark it with uh, blue so that it's going to be different. And it's the same thing like on DXY, but inverted. So what I would expect to see is price taking, let's say, Asia low and coming into this order block. And I would like to see a confirmation here in this zone. It can be after testing the balance price range. It can be coming into the order block, the point of interest that we have here. But I, I want to see a shift in delivery in 15 minutes. And if I see a shift in delivery in 15 minutes, then I will look for a long position to target um, this. The first target will be definitely previously weak high. No reason to target, to, to have crazy targets. It will be, if we get the confirmation here, it will give us more than good risk to reward ratio. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't just blindly buy here just because we haven't confirmed if we're shifting on the upside. I would wait for a confirmation. And another thing that I would observe is, of course, how like this is coming into trade management that I can talk about more in details when I'm in a trade uh, and, and I have a live stream. I can talk more about the trade management, even though like I've like from my results, I've seen that the trades that I'm not managing and watching are playing much better than trades that I'm trying to manage. If I'm not like really focused and stable, I do mess up and mismanage trades. Um, so sometimes it's just better not to try to control what will happen and not to try to save the loss, but just accept, okay, I'm risking that much today and whatever happens, it's, I'll let it play. Like I'll let it happen. Um, but yeah, I, this is what I'm going to be looking for today. And if I'm not going to see something like that, I'll be just out and wait and and play music and dance and do other things and look into futures. And <laughs> there are so many things that you can do um, if price is not like giving you the setup. I'm not a person who is taking trades every single day. I'm very picky with the trades that I'm taking. I, I used to trade take so many trades uh, back in the days when I was uh, when I had this uh, when I wasn't as aware and when I had this urge for trading when uh, uh, I was following and thinking that oh I don't want to miss such an opportunity because if I miss this opportunity then yeah there won't be such an opportunity anytime soon. This is thinking in um, thinking with scarcity mindset and that's not the state where you want to be at you want to be in um uh, in a you want to have an abundance mindset and abundance mindset is not thinking oh if i miss this trade it's gone like i'm not gonna get anything else no abundance mindset is you being calm and knowing that there will be always an opportunity and i will be patient to wait for my setup i will be patient and the, price, the market will reward me for my patience. Um, do you know how to dance salsa? Uh, I do know Latino, some Latino moves, uh, but I haven't been like taking classes. I can just follow <laughs> with the music. Um, and if, if, there, if I'm dancing with someone who can lead me well, I can dance without a problem, even though I haven't been like practicing many steps. 
but I like a lot bachata. I know the basic steps of, of all these um, Latino dances, but not, not crazy advanced steps, but I would definitely love to learn. Um, okay, let's let's go back to analysis. <laughs> so this is for Euro. This is my view on Euro. This is what I'm going to be looking for. And another thing that I want to mention that I just like noticed, you see this trend line liquidity that I've marked up. Price took some, some of this liquidity, but it still left some liquidity. So we have like this relative equal highs left here. We have this high, uh, but we took some form of sell side. So price is now looking for, uh, sorry, buy side. So now price is now looking for sell side. Always like think of it, like always ask yourself, where is price coming from and where does price want to go? If it's coming from a buy side liquidity pool, don't enter uh, buy before seeing sell side liquidity pool being taken out. Because if you don't see uh, sell side liquidity being taken out uh, after a buy side liquidity pool being taken out, then you are risking to be the liquidity. Explain with correlation with USD comparison again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, as I mentioned uh, on the higher time frame, we had SMT divergence. With, like DXY and Euro had an SMT divergence. Uh, DXY took this buy side liquidity, but because uh, if we invert the chart, you know that DXY and Euro are moving, um, they are correlated, inversely correlated. So what you see in Euro, you will see the opposite thing on DXY. But when we don't see the same thing, then we have SMT divergence. So in this case, price took buy side liquidity on DXY, but it didn't take sell side liquidity on Euro, which was an indication for me that Euro might uh, retrace higher. Uh, so you're talking about the what I was saying previously. So, um, yeah, so whenever I'm looking for a trade idea, um, you know that liquidity is the one driving price. So price is always going from buy side to sell side, buy side to sell side. That's how we have the candle. That's how the price is moving. That's how the, the candles are formed. So let's say if you have had a clear liquidity pool, let's say buy side liquidity pool being taken, like in this example, as I mentioned. Um, in this example here, we had this small trend line liquidity. So we took this buy side liquidity. So I'm not going to look for buys here because after this buy side liquidity, I want to see a sell side liquidity pool being taken because if sell side liquidity pool hasn't been taken or we didn't engineer sell side liquidity before our entry, we are risking to be the liquidity to, to get manipulated. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, good. Um, so to go back to uh, what the other person asked for, like comparing DXY and Euro. Uh, so as I mentioned, we had SMT divergence and SMT divergence. If you have studied about SMT divergence, you know that uh, when SMT divergence happens, this is an early indication that we can expect a reversal. Um, D D F R. Where, where do you see D F R? I don't know what you're talking about. Daily fair value gap, is it the 15 minute chart? Balance price range, point of interest. Where do you see DFR? I don't think it's DFR.
Yeah, uh, BFR is balance price balance price range. It's not BFR. It's BPR. And balance price range is when you have imbalance on both sides. So when you have two fair value gaps being formed, like here, we created imbalance. And when we pushed higher, we created another imbalance. So we, this is forming a balanced price range. And they usually, when you're bullish, they usually act as support. When you're bearish, they usually act as resistance. Yeah, so we had SMT divergence. We saw this push on the upside. So now if we take um, Fibonacci on the last leg, on the last move, we can see that we already tested 50%. Or we, we already retraced 50%. So from here, we might continue higher, but we might also go for OT or, or drop lower. That's why I said it's in a 50-50 position, and that's why I'm not going to take any risk entries. I would wait for confirmation in this zone. The, the only indicator that I'm using is uh, ICT true day. When I don't have more charts, like more monitors to watch, I do uh, turn on this uh, daily candle uh, just to see how the daily is uh, the daily candle is uh, forming. But the third one that I have is something that I'm not using anymore which was just showing me Asia highs and Asia lows and the midpoint of Asia, but I'm not looking at it anymore. So that's why I don't, I don't have it. But I have a friend who uses my trading view from time to time. So that's why it's there. <laughs> but it's the same thing. It's the same thing as Asia, Asia range. Welcome. Yeah, so the correlation for me is very clear. Um, and like um, for me, I can clearly see that we have the same thing that we saw on DXY on Euro, except for the SMT divergence. But the SMT divergence was a early indication that we can start looking for, for buys without seeing structure being broken. But now we have even structure broken. So I'm just looking for another, uh, I will just look for another bias from this zone here. In your USD, did, did you in a daily time frame mitigation block? It's already so I'm looking by side for this week. Let me try to understand what you mean. You mean that we tested this order block and that we're going for buy side? Is that what you mean? Yeah, then that's exactly what I'm also looking at. I might just use different terms and explain it in a more detailed way for you to understand better how I'm framing the ideas for my narrative. So that's exactly what I'm looking at. The high, the order flow on the higher time frame is bullish, even though we haven't yet confirmed that we we are we are gonna break from here, but. Seeing this liquidity definitely looks nice. That's why I want to look for long positions from this zone here. Okay, so now let me go to um, pound dollar. I took a trade on pound dollar last week, not on EURUSD, but the idea was the same. So on pound dollar, we are even like um, looking at the higher time frame. We know that uh, that euro and pound haven't been as correlated as um, they used to be. So pound has been 
Pound has been playing in this range for quite some time. Like you can see one, two, three, four, five months in this range here. Um, and we have this huge balance price range on the monthly. On the euro, we don't have such a big balance price range. On euro, this balance price range has been already closed. You see, like this is the balance price range that we have on the euro and it has already been tested and closed. But on pound, we still have the balance price range has not been even, yes, we have tested it, but it's, um, yeah, it, um, what I want to say is, is, is stronger than the, the euro. So we have this balance price range that will most probably act as support to push price higher. And if we drop on a lower time frame, let's say on the weekly, we can see that even though we had this market structure shift here and here, like looking at, looking at the current price action, we can see that we're creating higher highs and higher lows. So this low that created the previous higher high is still protected and it's still respected. But we have this balance price range here on the weekly that might act as resistance. And if you remember, I mentioned that we have a fair value gap here on DXY. So if you try to put things together, you can like see that we, we have same zones that are indicating a similar move. Um, so we have this balanced price range here. Uh, I see that I've marked up a breaker block on a lower time frame. I might remove it just not to confuse you and put it there later. So we have this, um, ah, what did I remove? I removed the balance price range instead of the breaker block. So we have this balance price range that might act as resistance some time to play out. That's why our task is to focus more on what is happening intraday and frame ideas intraday. So the order block that I had was actually this one here. Uh, we had a break of this daily structure. We had a retest. So we took buy side, we took sell side. We feel this huge uh, fair value gap that we have here, which will most probably act as support, as I mentioned last week, for price to continue lower into this balanced price range that I mentioned on a higher time frame. Uh, you can see the screen. Oh wow! Let me let me try. Let give me a second. Mm. Can you see it now? And wh when did it stop showing? Was I talking with myself? <laughs> Okay, so, okay, okay, that's good. Um, so as I mentioned, we took this sell side, we came to rebalance, we took, uh, so, sorry, buy side, we took sell side, we rebalanced this imbalance or fair value gap. So what I'm going to be anticipating is to see um, price, price respecting this zone to, in order to continue higher to reach the balance price range that we have on a higher time frame. So once we reach the balance price range on a higher time frame, we should just sit and watch what price wants to do and then take decisions on the next moves from there. Uh, we have also an institutional level here overlapping with the balance price range. But for now, I know that, okay, price is heading um, not 100% sure, but 
most likely price is heading towards this balanced price range. So from here, the first target is the previous weekly high and I will drop lower and I will try to look at the potential areas that might act as support for price to continue higher. So I already, already took one buy on, on Friday um, and my target my, my target was New York Midnight Open. We had this uh, breaker block, but I, my target was New York Midnight Open. Um, but from here, like we did not get this break. So that's why I will be waiting for a confirmation from these zones here in order for price to continue higher and break this, break, break this structure that we have here. So same as Euro, uh, the points of interest that we have here, let me just clear up so that it won't be. So we took um, the points of interest here will be this one here and the balance price range here exactly the same as the other one. So as we can see here, um, what I'm going to wait for would be sell side, uh, sell side liquidity being taken and shift in delivery on 15 minutes or five minutes like sometimes you can see that what's uh of, of course sometimes i do go on five minutes um just to because if we are only looking at 15 minutes it, it's easy to miss many moves and sometimes when i when i'm busy and i don't have time then i just disregard it and i wait for this confirmation of 15 minutes but when i have time to watch price i do sometimes drop even on five minutes and I spot the, the shift in delivery already on five minutes. Um, and with that, I get a, a better entry or earlier entry um, and higher risk to reward. But we should always know that the 15 minutes has more weight than the five minutes. So those lower time frames can be um, can be more manipulative than the higher time frames. That's why we go from higher to lower. We have to have know the bigger picture so that we won't get trapped on the lower time frames so uh the pound left relative equal highs here and now is coming for sell side liquidity yeah uh, so this will be my idea for today we have um institutional level also overlapping with these zones that are my points of interest so what i'll be looking for will be Mainly 15, yeah, mainly 15. But as I mentioned, like sometimes I drop on five minutes. Like last time, the trade that I took on Friday, I I was watching 15 minutes, but I dropped on five minutes to see more clearly like how we're like um, if we're shifting delivery because we had a strong move after the news. So on 15 minutes, I'm not expecting to see a nice structure being formed. It's always good to shift time frames. Don't base everything on one time frame. Like, try to think more critically. Try to shift time frames and see. But it's always good to go to a higher time frame because the higher time frame is more important than the lower time frame. So uh, always base your ideas on the higher time frame. Yes, I do use prop frames, but let's just finish with the analysis and then I we can talk about which prop firms I'm using. Oh my God, a question after a question. My, my own model, I'm using my own model. I'm using my understanding to enter. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, th this is what I'm gonna be waiting for. Um, as we can, I would now drop on even lower time frame, And as we can see the same thing that happened on Euro happened also with the pound. We had this sell side liquidity 
price took some uh, sorry buy side price took some buy side liquidity and now we are going and hunting sell side liquidity um so this is what i will be waiting for today i will be waiting for price to take this sell side liquidity and once we take the sell side liquidity and enter this balance price range i will be looking at 15 minutes and five minutes to see if we're gonna get a shift in order flow in order for me to look for long positions If I don't get the confirmation, I will just sit on my hands and wait. But do you understand why I'm like um, why I'm looking for this trade idea? We have another like liquidity pools here. I think. Um, Edvinas, you should calm down a little bit. <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. Of course, I'm using ICT. Like, uh, um, I'm not a uh, the thing is, like, I've noticed that many people that trade ICT concepts they are not really ICT traders. Why? Because they trade patterns. So, okay, so you have in your mind, let's say, um, Judas swing, and you're looking just for Asia high or Asia low to be taken in order to target the opposite side. Um, but you're not an ICT trader if you don't understand why price is doing what it's doing. And if you cannot create a whole idea and story, as I'm trying to create today to explain to you why I'm looking for the trades that I'm looking for. I'm not going to be just blindly coming here and like, oh, okay, let me look for Judas Swing. Let me just wait for price to take Asia low in order for me to target Asia high. It will work. It will work many times, but you should put more things together to create high quality setups. You should have understanding. If you are an ICT student, you should have understanding of why price is targeting specific levels, why price is going from one level to another level and in order to create the um the to in order to have the daily bias to know like where prices will go the next the, uh, today or the next few days you have to have this understanding you cannot just uh many people are just focused on the entry model this is the least important thing the least important thing is the entry model you should first focus on understanding the bigger picture understanding price because the easiest thing to do is to enter it's just one but uh, like we just have to click one button and we're in but what is hard is to start understanding price to start creating those ideas to um to build um not to trade patterns of course like they are patterns traders and it works you can be a profitable trader by only trading patterns but um if you really want to trade ict concepts you should be focusing on understanding price not focusing on silver bullet uh yes you have to have a model once you have understood everything else that i that i just that i've been talking about and once you once you understand everything that i've been talking about then you can understand uh, then you can ask yourself Okay, um, you can take one personality test. This is something that I told my community to do when they start, when they join. Take a personality test and see your strengths and weaknesses. Start reflecting and start asking yourself, how can my weaknesses impact my trading? How can my strengths imp impact my trading? According to the strengths and weaknesses that I have, what is the style that will suit me the most? Okay, so now when I know which style suits me the most, I'm, let's say, more impulsive or I'm impatient or I'm patient or whatever the weaknesses or the strengths are. Um, based on that, and ask yourself, how does my schedule look like? Okay, my personality is telling to me that I'm the, uh, my, the trading style that would suit me the best would be, let's say, scalping. But 
I have a full time job. I have three kids to take care of. I have this. I have that. Then can you really like sit in front of the charts for a long time and sculpt? Or in this case, like if you if your personality is saying the best style is sculpting and you're so busy, then try to find this. Then you can then decide, OK, uh, what entry model can I use? I can use or um, uh, I can use the silver bullet. Why? Because the silver bullet is just one specific hour every single day. And I'll make sure that this specific hour I'll be every day on the charts and trade this model. But for example, if you um, if your personality is saying that you are a person who is easily adapting to things, then you can um, give yourself time to understand different models and concepts, and you can be bot day trader, swing trader, scalper. You can do whatever you want, of course, with a plan, not just like okay, today I feel like scalping, and then I'm gonna take a position trade. Everything should be pre-planned. Everything that you do should be pre-planned and everything should be done uh, with understanding. Like um, I will, I've been reading this morning and I shared a few screenshots with my accountability group um, about self-awareness. Many people, many traders um, are not self-aware. And when you are not self-aware, you're it's not you trading. It's your ego trading. It's your ego that is driving your decisions. It's your ego telling you where to enter and what to do. It's your ego telling you to move your stop loss because you have to be right. Um, so in something that I wrote to them in, uh, in the Discord chat was um, ego and self-awareness cannot coexist. It's either one or the other one. So when you are not self-aware, when you, you, you don't know like... Um, you cannot observe the thoughts that are coming to your head, then you then it's the ego trading. It's not um, your mind is not you are not taking rational decisions. You are taking emotional decisions because it's the ego controlling your decision making. Let me try to find the screenshot that I shared with them, and and I will show it to you. Um, Um, let me just stop the screen sharing because I will have to share something else. So, Anna's casino. <laughs> oh my God, I hope you don't think it's a casino. <laughs> uh, well, so something that I shared with them this morning. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to protect my eyes from time to time. I'm forgetting to put my glasses on almost every day, but now I, I try to put them in front on my desk so that I'm going to remember to put them on. But yeah, um, I wrote to them, this is something that holds back many traders. They are looking for holy grail and the next thing to learn, but neglecting the awareness. It says to become familiar with your unconscious states of mind and body. Uh, and body takes an act of will, intention, and heightened awareness. If you become more aware, you will become more attentive. If you become more attentive, you will be more conscious. If you grow to be more conscious, you will notice more. If you notice more, you have a greater ability to observe self and others, both inner and outer elements of your reality. Ultimately, the more you observe, the more you awaken from the state of unconscious mind into conscious awareness. And when you're in conscious awareness, you, are, you will take the best decisions when you're in conscious awareness. But many people are in this unconscious awareness and they don't work on becoming or, or awaken, uh, to awaken. And I wrote, awareness and ego cannot coexist. You have one or the other. And what is causing trouble in trading? Of course, the ego that wants to be right. I want you to reflect when you read. Uh, I'm, I gave them a task to read a book. So um, 
I'm trying to give them guidelines and show them how I'm reading books, how I'm reflecting on things. So what is self-awareness? Self-awareness is having full control over the volume uh, control. And what is the volume control here? So in the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is our analytical mind. And that's where we receive the thoughts. That's where the thoughts of, oh, you're going to lose this position or you, this is going to happen or that is going to happen. All the thoughts are coming here. So what is self-awareness? To observe those thoughts, to understand the thoughts that are coming in your head, but lower the volume so that they are not going to pass in the other part of the brain to take control. In other words, if I translate it into a trading language, let's say you're in a position and price is going against you, then your so a thought is coming to your head and saying, move the stop loss. This is going to be a profitable position. You are right. Your analysis is correct. So you start, if you're not aware that this is just your uh, flight or fight trying to take control over you, um, if you are not self-aware that this is just a thought that wants to trigger an action, then you will just allow this thought to pass into the other parts of the brain, the motor center that will click the button to move the stop loss. Hey, Dane. <laughs> so when you are self-aware, um, you can observe those thoughts that are coming and you can lower the volume and you, you are not allowing them to pass through the other part of the brain that will start taking action and that will start causing the feelings of rush, the feelings of the, the panicking and all of that. Yeah, so that's why it's very important to work on your self-awareness. So for example, people that are focused uh, too much on um, which entry model, which thing, what like, uh, Try first to take time to start understanding price, to start understanding why price is moving. Um, don't rush things. Don't go crazy. Understand those things. Start working on your uh, awareness. And once you reach a lever, a certain level of awakening to be able to read your thoughts in the way how I started actually spotting those uh, thoughts in not allowing them to impact my um, decision making is by watching price and writing down what I'm, what it, what kind of thoughts are coming uh, in my head. Like, uh, or you can also like record yourself and talk loud what you're thinking while in a trade. But you're sitting on your hands and not doing anything because this is the awakening moment. This is the aha moment when you like start understanding. What are the things that are actually holding you back? But you should not be, of course, focusing on that if you don't know basics and if you don't know uh, market structure, you don't know um, you don't know anything about trading. You, the first part is first trying to learn and understand the technical part, and once you have understood the technical part, then you start working on your um, mindset. And the way to work on your mindset is working on your self-awareness, wor working on awakening, working on. And the thing is, like, when you are, um, when you are, you, you cannot be, like, it's not something that you just master. It's not something that, okay, I've done the job. I've been journaling my thoughts. I've been journaling my, um, yes, I noticed that you have to work on your mindset. That's why I told you, chill calm down <laughs> uh, that's why I'm talking about it actually you you um you kind of triggered me and you kind of like told me okay this is something that should be that will be valuable for me to share so um don't like uh, don't go crazy about all these entry models Tr first try to fo uh, focus on understanding uh, price focus on understanding movements the entry model should be the last thing that you should be focusing on um, and I noticed that you are in this uh, rushing mode 
according to the questions and according to the intensity that came from your from your end. Um, so this is a state that you might you might enter into this awakening state, but certain different factors um, in life can affect you and cause a brain fog. Um, so when you are when you have a brain fog, you might think that you are aware but you might not be like fully aware of what's going on and what thoughts you're feeling. Um, so that's why journaling is very, uh, that's why uh, journaling is so important. It's, it's important to uh, journal your traits, but it's important to journal your emotions because when you put everything on paper, when you are not able to enter in this observer uh, standpoint, you will be able to observe by first putting it down and then reading it like and and looking at it from another perspective. Um, I have been telling to my community like I can easily now spot when I have a brain fog. I can easily spot when I can I cannot really focus and I can understand which are the things or the factors that are impacting my mindset and are making me less focused or are making me like more emotional. And when you're in such kind of state, you don't want to trade. You don't want to be rushing to enter trades. Uh, like um, uh, many things happened in March for me. So I haven't taken trades from, the last trade that I took in March was on my birthday when I took the loss, when I got sleep, when I forgot the limit orders on my birthday and uh, I lost much more than I was I wanted to lose. Uh, so after this, after that event and after everything that happened with uh, the prop firms, my, everything became too noisy in my head. So I took my time. I took my time to like wind down, to get into a routine, to calm my mind. And the first trade that I took after 15th of March was the trade in on Friday. So it I, I went two, three weeks without taking a single trade. Why? Because I knew that if I was going to, um, if I was going to force myself to trade during this period when my mind was noisy, I, the chances that I was going to make mistakes are, were really high. Do you find this boring or do you find it beneficial? <laughs> I know many things are many, many people would be just like, oh, show us your entry model. And the book, uh, the book that I mentioned is uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself from Dr. Joe Dispenza. I can um, I can share it with you if you want. I can put it. Um, I have a PDF. And I think there, yeah, yeah, I have also um, audio version that one community member shared with me. So I can put them in the description of the live stream. Any trade journal application? Um, for the trades, I'm using Notion. And for, um, for my mental journaling, it's pen and paper. I like writing by my hand. Like when I'm talking, uh, when I'm writing about uh, my thoughts, I like uh, I like the old school way. But when I don't have my uh, journal with me, I use an application called Daybook. If that's the journal that you were asking for, but if you are asking for a trading journal, then I use Notion. NNFX, no. I I don't know who is NNFX. It's like first psychology class at school. I mean, if you want me to talk about psychology, I love talking about psychology. Just let me know. I can do thousands live streams on psychology. And I'm all the time like the books that I'm reading, all of them are related to psychology it, actually i want to um i want to my community is not 
no nonsense forex oh i know no nonsense forex i've heard of it i the youtube channel but i'm not watching youtube content anymore as i used to do before the the content that i'm trying to consume now is just content for my brain like healthy information i'm not looking at i i feel that when it comes to technical analysis i'm super confident with the way i do my analysis um i have been recording myself doing analysis every single day for quite some time and uh, i see how accurate my analysis is so I just feel that I don't want to confuse myself even more. I don't want to be in a stage of analysis paralysis. I have enough knowledge to be able to um, to make accurate analysis. So what I'm focusing on is working on my mindset, working on my mental health. Um, I need to go. <laughs> Yeah, so I know how important mindset is in um, in everything, not only trading. Uh, and something actually, something interesting that I can share with you uh, from this weekend. Um, the party on Saturday was with uh, one trader who was on FTMO's leaderboard. Um, I don't know this book, Trading Mindfully. Oops, 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 oops. What, what happened? Um, so he got 1 million in private funds. Um, and he was in his peak period. Um, so it was he was on the FTMO leaderboard without like over risking without going crazy like i asked him like what was the risk that you were using to be on the leaderboard because i know that usually people that are on the leaderboard are people that risk four percent five percent like go, go crazy with the risk and he told me that the maximum that he has been risking is like one to two percent and two percent is risky but not that, like too risky um so he has been in this flow state. He's working a lot on his mindset and it was a really cool conversation. Um, so he told me like uh, um, he was in this flow zone and everything seemed so easy. Everything was just flowing. Um, and there was a point when he started thinking, oh, how, how can it be so easy? Like something is off. Like, how, how can everything just be so easy? I'm not putting much mental effort. I'm just executing in every, and I'm just making the, those profits. So when he started thinking, like, how can it be so easy? Am I lucky? Like, what's going on? Like, um, he started, like, shifting. Do I really deserve those uh, wins or those profits that I'm making? He started thinking that way. And guess what happened shortly after he started thinking that way? He entered a negative loop and he lost $800,000 in less than a month. And he, he had suicidal thoughts after losing this money, which is understandable. Like, it's a crazy amount. And I'm actually... I want to... Uh, I told him, like... I want to arrange a podcast with words of wisdom because I believe that your story is a story that everyone should hear. Um, so he lost $800,000 and he had suicidal thoughts. He was definitely feeling that he wants to give up uh, on trading. And he has, he, he has been trading for 12 years. Um, and it, it took him, he took a break of three months if I remember correctly. Um, and after that came back and it took him eight months to recover everything that he has lost. So now he's back on track. Now he's back on uh, in this good... Um, he's in a good flow state. And uh, I will be meeting his uh, mental coach and meditation coach. I'm super excited about it. But it was very interesting to kind of like 
hear his perspective because he's really analyzing uh, his thoughts and his mind and how he's thinking. And uh, when he told me that, once he started thinking like, oh, it became so easy. How could, uh, am I lucky? Do I really deserve this? Once he shifted uh, his thoughts, everything just started going downhill. And this book that I gave to the community to read this month, and I'm reading it with them as well, uh, the break, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, it's talking exactly about uh, how our thoughts are creating the reality that we live in. And he was laughing at me when I was telling him that I'm trying to wash my brain every single morning. Um, so he was like, oh, it's a funny term to say wash my brain. Yes, I want to wake up and um, wash all the negative thoughts, wash all the noisiness that I have in my brain and um, and uh, feed my brain with something positive. It's uh, This book is also like teaching you how to manifest because uh, so it says your thoughts are creating your reality. So you have to uh, think about the things that you want to achieve and you have to trigger the emotions you have to trigger uh, your brain to produce the emotion that you would you would feel when you have achieved the thing that you want to achieve and once you start acting from the men from the mental state of um, the successful person that you want to be or the person who has achieved the goal that you have the purpose that you have once you start feeling those emotions that's when things start happening in reality so you have to you have to have entered this successful state before it happens in order for it to happen. That's why it's very hard for people to change, to get rid of bad habits, because our brain wants to keep us in certainty. It wants to repeat the familiar uh, past that we have been already living in because it knows how to deal with this uh, familiar past. Even though this familiar past might be a bad one. You might be addicted to a bad feeling. You might be addicted to um, to something that is just keeping you, uh, keeping you, holding you back. Um, but you might not be aware of the, those things. And you have to definitely like d work a lot with your thoughts, with your mindset, in order to understand where are the roots of the things uh, that I'm thinking and that are actually holding me back. How you should first see the problem, uh, unwire the those beliefs, and rewire new beliefs in order to create the new reality. Uh, the book is called "Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself," and it's about uh, changing the way you think. And once you change the way you think, you will change the way you feel. And once you change the way you feel, you will take different actions that will lead to a new reality and to a new future. But if you don't change the way you think, you cannot change the way you feel and the feelings that are triggering the emotion, the, the, the actions on a day-to-day -day basis will not change. So your actions will be the same. And this will not lead to any different reality. You will just live in the past. But by changing your thoughts, uh, you will change your feelings. By changing your feelings, you will change your actions. If you want me to translate it in trading language, this would be um, you start thinking positively. You start thinking, okay, today I'm willing to risk 1% of my account. I have accepted the risk and I will, um, I will let the price play. So when, um, when you start like thinking this way, you accept the risk that you have you truly accept the risk that you, you, you're willing to take. When this thought comes that you want to cut the loss or you want to move your stop loss, you, you, you are aware of the thought, but you don't do anything. So when you don't do anything, this will lead to another result that will cause a different feeling. And you start like shifting from uh, listening to this voice and not being aware um, and moving moving your stop loss and taking a bigger loss that will make you feel 
uh, sad, that will make you feel frustrated, that will make you feel uh, that you will lead to self-sabotage, that will create those negative thoughts. You Here you interrupt this action and the new action that happens makes you feel great, makes you feel proud, makes you feel calm, makes you feel... Um, makes you, uh, uh, puts you in an elevated state of feeling so that you can start entering this higher vibrational um, wavelength in your brain that will help you be in this conscious awareness. Uh, if you read the book, you will understand better what I'm talking about. I don't know if, you are, if I'm good at explaining. So in other words, you will have to like visualize and by visualizing, uh, as Chino said, so by visualizing, you are, uh, you should, but the thing is like, you can visualize, but you might not trigger the right emotions. So your mind and body should be in alignment in order for things to start working. And it takes a lot of time to put your mind and body in alignment and a lot of work. But once you do that, you can start creating the new reality. And I believe this has happened to you uh, before. Like, I know that I have been in states of flow even before I started trading um, with different like life events that I've had in my life. But I wasn't aware that this is a state of flow and this was the manifestation that helped me actually to go through the things that I went through and enrich the... Uh, goals that I have by, had by then. So I have been in this uh, state in like even before, but I wasn't aware of um, all the knowledge. I, I didn't have the knowledge to understand that, aha, this was it. Like this was that state of flow. This was how I managed to actually stay strong by manipulating my mind or by washing my brain, as I call it. I was washing my brain and even though everything was screaming around me, you're going to fail. Everything was screaming around me. It's so fucking difficult. Give up and go home. <laughs> like uh, I was ignoring all of that and I was looking at the mirror and I was telling to myself, you can do it. Keep going. Keep going. Um, so I was uh, in. That's why it's very important to wake up and feed your brain with something positive. I love reading in the morning because this is kind of like putting me in this calm state and, and I'm um, I'm a different person. Like when I start, when I, when I would wake up and I start the morning checking my Instagram, checking my messages here, there, doing this, doing that. I don't want to have a rushing morning. I don't want to go crazy in the morning. I don't want to, um, I, I really want to take my time at the morning to feed my brain with something positive in, and start my day that way. And I see that it's very beneficial for whatever you do in life. You're you're becoming a better person with that. You're you're doing you're doing things not only for yourself but for people around you. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about. I mean, I, I lose myself when I start talking about psychology. <laughs> um, and I think that I will go live sometimes and, and prepare like a whole webinar with examples, with structures, so that I'm not going to jump from topic to another, from one topic to another topic, so that it's going to be like more structured for you to understand better what I'm talking about with examples, with everything. Um, but yeah, some of you want, want me to look at um, other instruments. So let me know what you want to look at, want me to look at. Um, and I can share with you my opinion. Uh, when I know uh, someone mentioned gold earlier, like gold is at all time highs. It The order flow is so bullish. So trying to look for sales in this bullish order flow just makes no sense. So whoever trades gold, what I, the only thing I would say is like, wait for, uh, for retracements in, uh, to PD, uh, but the thing is, like, I cannot give many opinions on gold because I don't really know how gold is moving. Uh, for example, 
euro usd and gbp usd they do retrace to um to discount levels you can look for setups in discount let's say if you're bullish but i have heard that gold is not retracing even 50 percent most of the times so i cannot say too much i cannot like give i uh, nothing is an advice um everything is just my opinion but i'm not gonna act like i know everything when i i don't feel familiar with gold gold is a stranger to me so i cannot tell much like how i would trade gold and what i would do the only thing i can do is like tell you from a technical standpoint where price might find support and continue higher but one thing that I can tell you is like, don't look for sales in such a bullish market unless we have like a clear, clear shift in order flow. But for a clear shift in order flow, maybe it will happen with CPI, for example. That's why we have to pay attention to fundamentals as well and to look at the economic calendar. Um, usually when we're in such a crazy uh, bullish run, there should be a very important fundamental event that will shift the order flow so if gold wants to shift bearish there should be a significant fundamental event to shift this order flow because right now we're just so bullish how do we trade at all-time high i don't trade all-time high usd and gp usd are not at all-time high and i don't trade everything possible but like if i have to answer like i would say don't try to predict reversal to predict the reversals just go with the flow go with the order flow what do you recommend for a trader who wants to stick to icd concepts but is unable to trade during the london or new york session you don't have to be a day trader like Asia is not pretty to like it. Uh, if you want to trade Asia, Asia session, I would uh, advise you to look into pairs that are active during Asia session, which would be Aussie, NZD, or um, J Japanese yen. So you can maybe look at those pairs, and uh, and uh, I believe ICD has a concept uh for asia session but since i never looked at like i i was never interested in trading asia i i don't i'm not 100 percent sure so i cannot tell you uh i can't tell you like where to find the exact information you will have to look for it yourself uh but uh, look at pairs that are active during asia session if you want to only trade asia session if you want to be a scalper or uh intraday trader but if you are if you are fine with like swing trading, you can use power of three on a weekly time frame and just go with and like ICT concepts is not a specific strategy, it's an encyclopedia about trading. It's teaching us to understand price. So you can learn um, from uh, from ICT, you can learn all the concepts and not all the concepts. you can learn the core content because this is the core content is the one that is, helping us to build this understanding about price so once you learn the core content ask yourself should i do i want to be an intraday trader do i be, do, do i want to be a swing trader and according to the style that you want to trade you can uh pick the pairs that you want to trade and you can pick uh um you can like you will be able to decide which um, entry model to use in and frame the idea around like polish your entry the way you enter your entry criteria good morning good morning it's not morning here here is afternoon <laughs> Here is almost 4 p.m. And, and interesting thing, like now I'm not thinking of food. I have already been without food for 24 hours. And I'm not thinking of food. I that's how much I love trading. 
it makes me forget about other things. I'm so focused on it. Uh, Euro, you want to put a buy limit on Euro. If you want, do whatever you want. I, I already said what I'm looking for. I already shared my ideas on Euro. Aussie and Kiwi for Asian session. Yeah, that's what I mentioned as well. Yeah, but whatever you say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everything is acceptable. <laughs> uh, because we have people here from all over the world, so. Another thing that might happen now that we have a person who wants to just press a buy limit, I understand why you want to press a buy limit. Um, so let's say if we take this um, buy side liquidity in form of a trend line, if price does this, then we are breaking this four hour structure that I previously mentioned that has not been broken yet. Um, but the same point of interest that I have um, will be a point of interest for the future as well. So let's say we break structure. We, we have taken this buy side liquidity. So this small trend line that we're building here can act as sell side liquidity for price to come and test this balance price range and point of interest that I have in order to continue even higher. So this might happen as well. This is another potential idea. So if we see this buy side liquidity being taken, um, I would still wait for price to take this sell side liquidity because now we are kind of forming, or we might be just forming some engineering, some liquidity and later today, my idea might play out. Uh, I have already shared my ideas on DXY, Euro, and uh, Pound. So if you want to, I, I don't want to just repeat myself because there are people that have been here from the beginning. I don't want them to get bored. So you can just go back a little bit and you will hear my thoughts on Pound Dollar. Okay, guys, now, now that I reminded my brain about food... <laughs> I just feel that I want to go and eat. And I have been live already for almost two hours. So maybe it's time. It's time to finish today. But if you if you want, like I can. Uh, you're hungry too. Let's go and eat. Enough live streaming. Um, I, I might start like going live pre-London and do such analysis and take because for me it's better to go live uh, this time than going live at New York Open because New York Open here is now too late and it's usually after my workout so my energy is much lower um, at New York Open than now so now I can talk about psychology. I can talk about about anything. I mean, of course, later I, I can do that as well. But uh, I prefer to do more detailed analysis in the morning when I'm more focused. And I have to check on my community members to see how they're doing, to share my analysis with them if they haven't checked the live stream. OK, guys, thank you so much for joining. I will be finishing here. I have to go in it. Yeah, I think so too. I think I definitely covered everything in details. And I really took my time to explain every single part. I hope it was not confusing though. Fala fala EV my tube of then. I I hope that you found the live stream uh, available. And uh, don't forget to leave me a comment down below so that I can reach more people. I really appreciate all of the support. And I really appreciate that you are here with me 
it just gives me so much motivation and it, it, you inspire me like my community is the reason why i actually started feeling more motivated to start sharing things um live okay uh when are you streaming next i might go live tomorrow morning again and tomorrow morning europe uh europe time zone. <laughs> tomorrow morning is the wrong thing to say i might go live tomorrow uh same time as today uh 8 a.m central european time if not tomorrow then i will be live 8 a.m central european time on wednesday for sure okay thank you so much guys um Thank you for joining and see you tomorrow or on Wednesday. Have a great day and trade safe. Bye bye. And for, for the next live stream, I will um, I will prepare more like bits so that we can have fun as well. <laughs> bye. And yeah, I can prepare for psychology as well.